Timothy 3, uh, 1 to 13. Remember, Timothy has been sent by Paul to Ephesus to um, sort out issues in the local church where there have been disputes and trying to establish um, godly leadership and godly patterns uh, for the church gatherings. Um, and uh, in chapter 3, then, we come to look at um, people who have got areas of responsibility in church life. Uh, so let's, let's read. Uh, verse 1, here is a trustworthy saying. Whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Now, the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, uh, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him, and he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. In the same way, deacons are to be worthy of respect, sincere, not indulging in much wine and not pursuing dishonest gain. They must keep hold of the deep truths of the faith with a clear conscience. They must first be tested and then, if there's nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. In the same way, the women are to be worthy of respect, not malicious talkers, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. A deacon must be faithful to his wife and must manage his children and his household well. Those who have served well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. So here we have um, Paul uh, writing to Timothy, um, helping him to put the uh, church in, in Ephesus uh, straight in various areas and trying to help correct some of the, the problems. Um, and uh, he then spills into these two areas um, of overseers and deacons, or uh, as it is literally, servants. Um, now we uh, leap to assuming this is elders and deacons and we make conclusions about this. Um, the word overseer um, means the household manager. Um, it was the, the slave who was responsible for the managing of the uh, owner's household. He'd be responsible for ordering the other slaves, making sure everything ran smoothly. Um, now, we happen to know that this is the same role as a, an elder or um, a, a, a pastor teacher, um, a shepherd, um, from other texts in scripture where the, the, the three titles are used uh, interchangeably. Um, uh, and so it's interesting here that, that Timothy is using overseer. He's talking about a church family that's experienced a bit of chaos and uh, some troubles. And, and he's saying the, the, the elders, the, the, the shepherds, have this responsibility of oversight, of uh, management of ensuring that the whole church family operates uh, well. Um, and uh, so um, the elders have responsibility for overseeing all aspects of uh, the church life. Uh, and because of that, then their, their character needs to be right and their, their gifts need to be appropriate. Now, it's interesting in terms of gifts, there are only two really. One is ability to teach uh, and the other is that they need to have managed their own family uh, well. Uh, their children uh, obey them and, uh, and uh, that... Uh, there's a sense in which that his own home is well ordered because if he can't manage his own home uh, there's no way he's going to manage the, the church family and so those are the, the those are the giftings required um, ability to teach um, because if you look at um, chapter one uh, there are disputes and problems and uh, energy being divested in things that uh, are not um, don't, that don't matter so there's got to be a teaching that sets that straight and an ability to manage the family then the church family to be able to lead it well and if he can't manage his own kids his own household well he can't expect to manage god's household as well but the the, the overwhelming requirements for the overseer then a, a character above reproach is the is the the overall one there's no area of his life where you can point the finger and say there's a serious issue there that needs to be sorted uh, he needs to be faithful to his wife but temperate self-controlled respectable hospitable uh, not given to drunkenness not violent but gentle not quarrelsome not a lover of money these are these are all character qualities that that need to be uh, true for uh, those who would have oversight of, of the family uh, of, of God. Um, and also then they need to be a mature believer, not a recent convert, because the danger is that uh, um, being handed responsibility too soon, uh, if you're too immature, can lead to pride. And that was the very thing that, uh, that ruined the devil was uh, an overreaching of um, his station and wanting more, wanting to be God uh, and competing with God then. Um, and also then it's interesting that, that they need to have a good reputation with outsiders so that the, um, the, the church family doesn't fall into disgrace, that someone, everyone looks at in the community and says, that, that man's terrible. And then they say he's leading the church. And 
what's that going to do for the church's reputation and uh, also uh, that individual and so here's here's this area of, of the overseers the ones who have responsibility for every area of church life the oversight of of all aspects um the elders or the um uh, the, the the shepherds and then he says in the same way that the, 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 the servants are to be worthy of respect. Now, this is more elusive than elders um, because the word deacon uh, is translated servant all the way through the rest of the New Testament. Um, uh, servants of the gospel, serving one another, all those all those words are, are diakonos, uh, the Greek. And this is the only place where these ser servants then have a, a place of, of, of position or responsibility or role. A, des a designated role of service other than in the greeting to the church in Philippi. Uh, we often run to Acts 6 as, a, as a, a potential model of what that looks like, people given delegated responsibility in a certain area to serve nominated servants, but actually it's, it's very elusive. We, we don't have any examples other than that potential one as to what these servants do, but if they, if they are known as servants, so they are uh, um, delegated responsibilities in church life, uh, these people too need to have um, a good reputation. Uh, they need to be worthy of respect. They need to be of good character too. Uh, they don't need to be able to teach because that's not part of, of this particular role, um, but they need to be uh, reliable people. Um, translation issue as to whether verse 11 means their wives or the women, it can be the, it's the same word and can be both, but uh, I think it, it's um, the NRA is right in translating it as women. So this role could be male or female, whereas overseer is male only. Um, and, and these folks who've got a delegated responsibility to serve the church family in some particular area um, uh, need to be tested. Uh, they need to be uh, trustworthy and, and, and proved in, in, in that role that there's clearly some sort of training or some sort of uh, um, uh, role period, if you like, uh, the trial period. Um, but uh, if, if they do it well, let, let them serve let them get on with it. Um, and uh, they too must be able to uh, run their own home well. And um, a, a husband needs to be faithful to his wife in this situation. Um, so that um, the church family can uh, function well. It's a reminder that in all that we're doing as church, um, almost uh, the, the most valuable thing across all of these things is character, godly character. Uh, we can look at other churches where perhaps they have more gifted people serving in certain areas, perhaps we can look a bit jealously with those, uh, but the church which is uh, gospel focused will be most focused on gospel character. Uh, rather than on great gifts and it's something for all of us to aspire to whether we have a role of oversight or service um, or whether we consider ourselves just a, a, an ordinary church member um, we still all have a part to play and uh, our godly character is crucial uh, to that so let's ask God's help to be uh, godly people well there's a very real sense in which what is required for overseers and, and servants here in 1 Timothy 3 are characteristics that should be true of all of us. Um, it shouldn't just be the case that the leaders are gentle and not violent. We, we all ought to be gentle and not violent. It's not just that, that the leaders ought to be uh, temperate and self-controlled. We all, we all ought to have these qualities. And we, we pray, Lord, that you'd help us to treasure um, uh, the, the importance of godly character for the sake of the gospel. We pray that all of us will be uh, seeking to grow um, by your spirit in, in godliness and fruitfulness. But that most of all, Lord, that you, you would be um, helping those who do serve as overseers or servants in the life of the church. That they will be exemplary in these areas. That there would be no shades of unhelpfulness in their character. Uh, Lord, that you'd help them to grow in their godliness so they can serve us better um, and better. Uh, Father, we uh, learn too from this just the importance of family life. And uh, families are real battlegrounds. Our own uh, families are places where there's often great uh, difficulty and temptation and hardship and there is need for um, blood, sweat and tears almost in trying to ensure family life runs well. And we need great wisdom and help. And we pray, Lord, for your grace in this for all of us as a church family. And we pray, Lord, that uh, our church family will be well ordered, um, that it will be led by those who are godly in character as well as gifted in, in, in leadership and, and in teaching. Uh, so that the gospel may go forward and flourish. Um, and we ask for your grace in this in Jesus' name. Amen.